Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how you can create this satisfying loop in Blender. So let's get started. First hit of day and add an icosphere. Set the subdivisions to 4 and go into edit mode. Press 1 on the numpad and let's go into wireframe view. Select the vertices on the bottom and let's delete them. Now alt click on this edge here and press F. Now press I to insert it like this. Go back into object mode and press ctrl 3. Set the subdivisions for the render to 3. Now shades move. Let's add a torus. Rotate it on the X by 90. And go into edit mode. Delete the vertices on the bottom. Or select this edge here and press F. And do the same for this side. Press 3 and select both faces and press I. Back in object mode, press Ctrl 3 and again set the render to 3. Let's hide the objects in the render and in the viewport. If you don't have this option here, then go up here and enable it. Add a plane and go to geometry nodes and click on new. Delete the group input. Add an object info node. And let's select the two objects that we created. Let's bring the torus down here. Add a mesh line node. And let's also add a transform node. Duplicate it. Plug the mesh into the geometry and let's set the count to 5. Set the offset on the Z axis to 4. For this transform node, set the X translation to 2 and the Y rotation to 90. For this one, leave the translation at 0 and set the Y rotation to 90 again. Add an instance on points node. Duplicate it twice. For the first two nodes, let's use this geometry here and for the third one, this one. Now for the last two nodes, let's use this geometry as the instance. If we all shift click on this one, we've got something like this. Now let's open the timeline. I'm going to set the end frame to 80. For the first instance on points node, let's set the Y to minus 180. 80, keyframe it, go to frame 40, now set it to minus 360, keyframe it again, and now make sure the node is selected and also the plane, and select the first keyframe that we created and bring it over here to frame 81. Make sure you're on frame 1, and for the second instance on points node, I'm going to set the X rotation to minus 90 and keyframe it, go to frame 40 again. And let's set the set to 180, keyframe it, and again select the node and select the first keyframe and bring it to frame 81. For the third one, again set the X rotation to minus 90, keyframe it, and go to frame 40, and now set the set rotation to minus 180, keyframe it, and again let's duplicate the keyframe and bring it to frame 81. Add a joint geometry node. Put that here and let's also take these instances and plug them into the geometry. I made a little mistake here. Let's select this node here. Here the X shouldn't be minus 90, it should be 90. Keyframe it again. Go to frame 40, set it to 90. Keyframe it and go to the last keyframe and set it to 90 and keyframe it. Now if we press play, we've got something like this. Let's also take this output and plug it in here. Let's take these two nodes and duplicate them and bring them up here. Set the X to 4. Take the icosphere and bring it over here. Add another instance on points node and put that here. Plug the geometry into the points and let's take the geometry here and plug it into the instance. Select the node and press Ctrl Shift D to duplicate it and keep the connections. And for the last one, let's disconnect this. For the last one, let's use the geometry of this node here for the points. Plug all of the instance and points node into the joint geometry node. For this node, let's set the Y rotation to 180 and keyframe it. Make sure you're on frame 1. Go to frame 40 and set the rotation to 360. Make sure the plane and the node are selected and select this keyframe here and bring it over here. For this one, make sure that you're on frame 1 again and keyframe the rotation with everything set to 0. Go to frame 40 and set the Y rotation to 180 and keyframe it. And again, select the node and bring the first keyframe over here. Go back to frame 1. And for the last one, let's keyframe the rotation again. On frame 40, let's set the Y rotation to minus 180, keyframe it. Again, select the node and select the first keyframe and duplicate it and bring it to frame 81. As you can see, there are some icospheres missing here. That is because we need to take the geometry and plug it into the instance here. Here, let's set the scale to 0.74. Do the same for these nodes here. Add a set material node. And let's put one here, 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 
here and here. In the material properties, create two new materials. In your case, it probably won't say material 4 and 5, but that's okay. Here, let's select the first material. Now here, let's select the second one. Here, the first one. Here, the second one. And now here again the first one and here the second one. Now let's save and go to shading. I recommend that you use Eevee for this. The reason for that is because we're going to use the ambient occlusion node and that works best in cyclus. So let's add an ambient occlusion node. Plug the color into the base color. By the way, you can find a link to the HDRI that I'm using in the description. Let's also go to the render properties and set the max samples to 512. Go to film and make it transparent. If you want, you can go to color manager and set the field transform to filmic and the look to very high contrast. I recommend that you set this back to the standard settings before compiling the images. Now here let's select a green color, add a color ramp, put it here, select the white and now click and drag the green in here. Let's also set the metallic to 1, add a mix node and set it to color, plug the result into the roughness and into the normal. Now let's add a noise texture. And let's duplicate it. Plug this factor into A and this one into B. Let's also set this factor to 0.8. For this one, set the scale to 10 and the detail to 15. Here, set the scale to 1000 and the detail to 15. Select one of the noise textures and press Ctrl T and plug the vector into this one as well. Add a bump node. Put it here and let's use the height. Set the strength to 0.005. Select all of these nodes and press Ctrl C and now set it to the first material. Delete the principal BSDF and press Ctrl V. Plug the BSDF into the surface. Now let's change the color here. Change this color and again drag it in here. Go back to layout mode and press delete on the numpad and 1. Now add a camera. Press Ctrl Alt 0 and press G and set it twice. I'm going to move it down. In the output properties, I'm going to set the frame rate to 30. Select an output folder. I'm going to use JPEG with the quality set to 100%. Before we render this, go to compositing, enable use nodes and denoising data. Press shift, right click and drag over here and control shift click on it. Save again and press F12 to render one image. Add a bright contrast node. Let's set the contrast to 7. Now add an alpha over node. Let's use this image input and let's make this one a light yellow. Add a color balance node. Make this a light green. This a light red and this a very light blue. I think I'm actually going to set the contrast to 0.3. Now go here to the texture properties. Click on new and select clouds and set the size to 0, add a mix node and let's also add a texture node. Plug the color into the image and let's set the factor here to 0 0.02. Now select the texture. In case your render crashes, you can go up here and enable lock interface. To speed up the render, you can go to performance and enable persistent data. Just be careful with this because it can use a lot of memory. Save again and press Ctrl F12. Feel free to like and subscribe. If you like this tutorial, then you're probably also going to like the one that is on screen now. I'll see you next time.